Hello everyone. In the previous videos we built a home page. Now I will show you how you can optimize it to have as few elements as possible, so that it contains less code and loads faster. As you can't see the two sides will look the same, but will be created using fewer building blocks. While the original version will have 8 sections, the new version will only have 6. Only 8 of the 29 columns will remain. The 7 intersections will be 0, the 35 widgets will be reduced to 27. Okay, let's go to the dashboard. I will be working on the Electro homepage, but you will be able to use the knowledge you gain by watching this video with me on other pages built with creative elements. Let's get started. Here we have one section with one column containing one intersection with two columns and four widgets. Let's see how much we can get out of this. First I will set the section as shown below. Then I am going to set the same background. If you drag in a widget, the column background becomes visible. Now I return to the style tab of the column. I resize the image to contain so that the whole image is visible set it to non-repeating, and then fill the resulting blank space with the same color as the image. I set the vertical alignment of the content to middle, and align it to the right using padding. From these three widgets I make one call to action widget. I won't need the picture, so I delete it. I replace the texts. For the button, I select the same icon from the list that I used before. I arrange the text to the left and delete the padding. I enter a spacing of 50 to get the right distance between the elements. I also increase the font size and the spacing between lines to make my title look like below. I change the color of the text. And set the background color to transparent. Now I just need to format the button. It looks exactly the same, but more optimally structured. Now that I have done that, I will delete the old section. Next I am going to make one column of these three. I will move the smartphones and smartwatches to the first column. And delete the empty columns. OK. On the Advanced tab, I open the Custom Positioning and set the widget width to 33%. I repeat this for the other two call to actions. Since we want to put three widgets in a row, we need to divide 100% by three. I put some space between the elements using the margins. Also on the top. Looks good. Now I merge the widgets just like above. I will use a call to action widget instead of the two heading widgets. I am going to delete the image here too, because I won't need it. I will replace the text. 
and simply delete the button. I am going to set the fonts. and their colors. Finally, I increase the spacing between the two titles. Now I can delete the old headings. I will replace these six columns with just one. In addition to using drag and drop, you can also sort the items in the navigator. You can open up at any time with a single right click. Here you can't see all the elements, and by dragging them you can't easily change their position. There you go. Now I am going to move the other categories out of their current positions. To sort them side by side, I am going to set the custom width percentage just like I did above. When I am done I will simply copy and paste the style onto the other elements. And I delete these empty columns. The next step is to merge these three elements. I am going to use the call to action widget for this again. I just need to duplicate it. Center the contents. Swap the colors of the titles. And resize the spacing between them. I will replace the texts. I am going to make a little space below and above the widget using margins. I delete the old content and continue optimizing with masonry redesigning. To do this I create a new two column layout section. I will do the same look, but now without the intersection. And adding a little padding. By the way, this section is also built from call to actions, so you can't see how versatile of a widget this is. I am writing 50% to fill up the space to the point of half. And the 5 pixel padding is needed to give some spacing between elements. There is a larger gap left here. To eliminate this I need to set the widget space to zero in the column layout settings. I hide the editor to check better what I have created. Now I will delete the unnecessary intersections and columns. Since this masonry was created in a two column section, I need to create a new section to center the following headers. I duplicate the above heading. I replace the text. And to get rid of the button I delete its text. I also delete the old section. I cannot get this section any more optimal than this. So I go to the next one. Here I will merge the titles using the tried and tested method.
I replace the texts. Then change the colors. Reduce the distance. And after that, delete the old addresses. Grab the icon boxes and pull them out of the columns. Finally, delete the empty inner part that has become unnecessary. I use the method above to place these three elements next to each other. This again saves an intersection and three columns. If you apply these best practices, you will improve the performance of your online shop. To center the elements I will go into the column settings. I delete the padding to eliminate unnecessarily large spaces. The separator lines are still missing. I am now going to add them to the icon box. I hide the editor to see what I have created. Nice! Now I will switch to tablet view and see what changes the optimizations have caused here. My background image is in the middle, but I want it to be next to the text. So I am going to set the position to custom. Now I want the text to be smaller. So I decrease the font size. And here I would like the smartwatches to fit on one line. I can't do this by reducing the font size as well. To make my page look consistent, I repeat this operation for the other two categories. This time I will make square boxes by reducing them in height. This part, I will make my image boxes bigger by resizing their custom width. I apply the settings to the others as well. It looks good? That is all so. This one is too big, so I will delete the column padding. I will also make the margins of the icon boxes smaller. In order to keep the separators at equal distance from the widgets, I use different padding and margins on the middle element. And here I set the same numbers as for delivery, and the result is drawn. I hide the editor panel. Okay, now let's look at all this on mobile. The smaller device always inherits the settings of the larger one. This can sometimes result in a strange appearance. But do not worry, by resizing the paddings you can easily get the layout that works for you. My background image looks like this, because I configured it for tablet. But now I want it to be centered. So I choose top center position. This layout looks too crowded. So I set this widget to full width. 
and remove the margins to eliminate the white stripe around the edge. For smartphones I will put 10 pixel margins at the top and bottom, creating a small empty space between the categories. This title is a bit overlap. I reduce the font size to fit two lines, and increase the line height to keep the lines from overlapping. Here, to make these widgets bigger, I am going to display two categories per line. To achieve this, set their custom width 50%. I am scrolling slowly down the page, checking that everything looks fine. Now I do the same as I did at the beginning with the banners. I will set these icon boxes to full width. I will use the margins to create an aesthetic layout. I am going to move the borders to the top and bottom in mobile view. It looks nicer that way. I save the work I have done so far. I am going back to the back office. Finally, I view my shop. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. You can use these tips and tricks you have just learned on any other page created with Creative Elements Page Builder. If you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments below. I will be happy to answer them. Goodbye.